How's it going, everyone? I'm Honan. I'm Anavan. And this is the K-pop podcast. Episode fifty something, apparently. But I feel yes. like it's, I feel like it's more than that. Logan I feel like, said ha- like, that number, right? Yeah, I feel like Logan must have missed some. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like we had more than that. But as for now, that's he's the only one who's bothered to try to try and count. <laughs> so yeah. That's where we're at. Uh, what are we going to talk about? Follow, we're following up on stuff from. My two brain, weeks. my brain was thinking, did I ever accidentally like have to remove an episode or anything? But no, I didn't. Like they're all there. But I think yeah. they're. I, I'm going to throw them all into the playlist properly again, and then see what that oh, yeah, ends the, up being. That's the play. Like, like that, that saves having to manually like one, two, three, yeah, <laughs> looking yeah, at yeah, the yeah. things you're scrolling down. Yeah. Yeah. Fair play. Fair play. Yeah, what are, we, what are we talking about? We're we going to talk oh. about so many things. Blackpink's uh-huh. contracts, Nyan's mother's ex-boyfriend, Baby Monster can't debut because of Blackpink's contracts. <laughs> like, what is Probably. That? Pro- yeah, possibly. I... I mean, they could also just be like normal pre-debut like stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, well, YG is famous for this, right? Like, they're always... They're like have they never have no issues with uh, delaying stuff when they feel like it's necessary. Um, but yeah, I think if if anyone remembers anything about when um, when the baby monster stuff was getting ready, they were like, yeah, they're going to debut in September. And as of the date of recording, it's like almost the end of September, and obviously we uh, we, d- we hadn't heard anything. And then YG came out, and we're like, yeah, we're delaying it to uh, improve the quality, is what they said. Um, but this also kind of surrounded some um, speculation that one of the members might have dipped because uh, because she hadn't been the the members as a whole. I think there's supposed to be seven, right? But um, six of them had been seen in like public things, like on a couple of occasions. And this one member, the same girl, her name's uh, Aion, wasn't uh, wasn't with them and hasn't been seen in public for a while. So maybe she's just you know chilling. Um, some people are like, hey, she's got surgery and she's hiding her face. <laughs> or like recovering, whatever, it's possible. Um, or she might have had, there might have been a situation and uh, and she's left for whatever reason. So I guess we'll find out that um, sooner or later. It'd be interesting but... to leave such a big debut. Yeah, you've got to have a good like reason. Beforehand, it... right? Yeah. Especially from in... a major company like YG Entertainment. Like, you know you're going to have incredible success right away. Like, you've yeah. got to... You're not going to be more successful at a different company. Like, that's... No. <laughs> um, so, yeah, well, hopefully we'll get an answer to that. And then, yeah, the, it seems also plausible that their um, YG is waiting until they can have some kind of uh, closure on the Blackpink stuff, which, which currently is that Rosé is, is renewing, um, and it seems is the only member to actively renew with YG. Mm, Rosé is the only uh, active renewing member? That's the, okay. the current uh, understanding, yeah. Okay. Um, there seems to be the understanding that uh, Jenny and Jisoo will go with some kind of Western label that allows them to also set up their own sub-label within a bigger company. So like, you know, they sign for like Republic or whatever, and then they can set up like a subsidiary of their own underneath it. Um, and then do whatever the hell they want to do under that, I guess, because they would just sort of be their own boss, you know? Um, More and Lisa, I suppose, right? Yeah, and Lisa with a similar thing, but I think she may be considering the options uh, to stay more Asia-focused than um, Jenny and Jisoo, which is interesting, because you would have thought it would have been more Jisoo's range to stay. Yeah, I but, thought of anyone, yeah. Jisoo would be like, more maybe into the acting stay with like yg or something i think that's what everyone thought it was but that's kind of crazy yeah. so she's like considering doing uh, her own company and everything. but it, it might just be that she wants to be independent so she's free to do whatever um but there's like obviously this is, is mostly speculation all yg have said is like hey we're still negotiating like nothing's been decided yet um and the the, the, the good news uh for blinks is that the every report about it has said that there is some underlying understanding that the girls don't want to just say that Blackpink is done and that they they want to keep 
uh finding opportunities to work together and make music together yeah um and there's talk of like oh there would be some kind of deal where they have a contract as they or they do have some agreement with yg which means that they come and work as blackpink for a certain amount of time every year uh the first time i was hearing was six months but that seems like really high <laughs> i don't i don't i feel like it wouldn't be like that but um whatever it is it, it, obviously that would be i guess ideal for everyone right that they get to do what they want to do but also they don't give blackpink uh a rest forever excuse good morning the alarm going off Wait, in well. the background good morning my good morning alarm i use that alarm too <laughs> but actually i could i started falling i, I slept through it one time because it's so gentle tried to change it to the more aggressive sounding one i could see like the alert for it showing up and i was like yeah Can i open it quickly enough to stop the sound but it was not possible <laughs> Uh, sorry, continuing. Off no, well, I mean, that's, that's pretty. That's pretty much it. Just yeah, I think that's the the best outcome for everyone is that if they can do their own thing but have time to work together as well, I think at some points, and that's kind of ideal, right? Like, yeah, I wonder if YG is that cordial or if they'd be salty and like cause an issue somehow. Well. I feel like if they push them away entirely, it's just it's like... It's a horrible business. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, business yeah, yeah. Does yeah. It? Like, if anything, it's like their company stock would just go like completely... Yeah. Up. Um, there has been talk of Jenny going, maybe going to the Black Label, which is kind of what, um, what G-Dragon and Tang did. Um, While technically kind of being... It's like they're at YG, YG but not... Like, I, I was at the YG building the other day because there was a, um, a signature fan signed there. Not there, but like across the road. Which is like oh, hilarious. Are you like in the specter of this giant building? Um, <laughs> Sorry, a signature fits up in the middle of like yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> the dark empire building of like. K-pop. It's actually um, <laughs> it's like two blocks away from that place we went for uh, Korean pancakes. Oh, yeah, nice! That place was like around then. Yeah, um, but like you see like the massive gray YG building, and then like literally underneath it, you just see like the black label. It's like they're very much directly affiliated you can't like separate the two of them yeah because so. yeah. teddy runs that right yeah, yeah so i mean we there's an example to follow in um what, what sm did just recently was with uh suju because dong hey and only didn't resign with sm um and they set up their own label which they're calling ode like ode because they're d and e which i think is yeah, they, they they a <laughs> And so they're like they're CEOs of their own company and they they're looking to hire like their own artists, train their own artists and stuff like that. But they're still very much participating as members of Suju and and working with SM. So something like that is possible. It, it can happen. Um obviously it's more logistically challenging, but it's not you know, it's not an impossibility. So there still has to be some sort of contract written with the original some agreement yeah, yeah yeah like a percentage agreement of some sort yeah, yeah. you would need like a promise from whatever new company that they are getting a percentage of every like thing basically yeah what well, and that's it's obviously those kinds of details are what takes forever to get ironed out and that's what leads to such long long de- long delays in announcing these kinds well, of I suppose things jenny jisoo lisa can make the kind of contract for everything of their own name and their own value is theirs and then anything group related goes to like the yg percentage yeah yeah um so yeah that's kind of where that stands uh people are also very upset with lisa at the moment because she's been doing a um cabaret performance in paris or in france somewhere um (laughs) but she's like she, she's like straight up like nude behind a behind a glass or something so it's like a silhouette and it's like very sultry or whatever um i think they've gone i think they're beyond the point of needing to be the typical k-pop yeah, like <laughs> belonging to like the rules of other k-pop groups and things no, like no. that you know what i mean like i think they've kind of gone beyond that stratosphere but, but what i th- i think the combination of things like that plus like what uh jenny on the idol and stuff like that is it's um saying exactly that that they're beyond the kind of the idol sphere Mm. and that's kind of why maybe the those members in particular are looking to go and and pursue more of their activities away from korea to be Um, more like internationally 
super yeah, super super and just do what they want to do. If they want to do that kind of stuff, then they want to do it with free of judgment, you know. It's free interesting. Of what I would, would you would have thought too, right? Like Rose would be like signing at a different label, releasing like her own music and everything. Where she could she seems do, yeah. To be almost like the more YG. But at the same time, I can it. understand if Rose's goal is just like I want to sing and release music. And I'm happy. I'm comfortable and happy in my she's life. Right now. Working with like Teddy, yeah. Just, just, yeah. Just, I want. I'm happy doing this. I like my life as it is right now. So why would I change it? Like, I don't, I don't um, resent that that perspective at all. Mm. Um, yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of where Blackpink sit. Which and you um, Hollywood was. <laughs> yeah. I shows up in the next one. Mission Impossible casually or something. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, I can see GC doing the more like wild side quests out of everyone. I think, mm. like, yeah, she's um, like besties with uh, Charlie Theron, so is she really? <laughs> yeah, have you not seen any of that? Uh, I don't Charlize know. Theron, they, seem, like, they get photographed uh, with the most random celebrities. No, yeah, Charlie Theron did like a whole thing, like where she pretended like she was her bodyguard and stuff like that. Okay, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Mad Max um, win. <laughs> oh my god, can you imagine? A Blackpink themed Mad, Mad Max merch. Uh, other contract stuff that came out. Um, so SF9, uh, so quite surprisingly, all of them renewed their contracts with FNC. But Rowoon signed a contract with FNC to work as an actor and not as an idol. And it, the statement was really uh, vague because it kind of it felt initially like oh, like he it was like has he left the group? Has he not left the group? Is he going to do stuff with them? Is he not going to do stuff with them? And it seems like the answer is he's not going to be doing stuff with them anymore. Um, but he's still in the company, but he's kind of just like moved to a different department. You said you think he wants to do like acting. Yeah, I mean S S F nine in general have been doing a shit ton of acting because like that's kind of their whole thing. Um, they're all they're kind of very. They're very like i mean you remember them from kingdom right they're very kind of like actor built dudes yeah like yeah. except except for chani like rowan especially he's like tall dark handsome like very typical kind of career actor guy look and he, they're, they're to the point that they some of them don't even look like idols they look like actors playing idols yeah you know i i know what um, you mean i remember like the from kingdom i think like five or six of them have had like major roles in dramas or whatever so they um they definitely got the acting bug, and Rowan obviously has tried to decided to take that kind of to the next level. He's him. He's probably had the most uh, success as an actor out of all of them, so it does make sense for him uh, career wise. But obviously, it's sad for the other members who are, uh, you know, was, you know gone without him. I said it to you kind of before we started that. I that's kind of a bit a bit bad for them because like he was like the member I know. <laughs> Right from their group, <laughs> like uh, yeah, they, which well, you, they know, have... you know how bad I am at like memorizing members sometimes, but yeah, sure, it was, like the one that stands out. They were easy to learn. Like Rowan being the really tall one and Chani being the really small one made those were the easy ones. And you had like Zelo, I think, and then Huyang. Do I remember anything on the top of my head? I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, that's kind of that situation. And the other one we we talked about Red Velvet's uh, contract situation, which we haven't had any further developments on um but we did kind of get a uh, confirmation that they are going to be releasing another album yes. later this year it only um, took so long <laughs> yeah it's been a while um irene was at the sm town show in um in jakarta the other night she was sick right she was she was not uh not not in the best of shape yeah and like um it feels like it's happened to Red Velvet a lot. It feels like their members have had to not be on stage because they've been um, under the weather for whatever reasons. Like we had like Joy had to miss uh, some shows and stuff for that reason as well. Um, but Irene was very committed to actually just going out on stage, but it was clearly at a point that she was struggling to stay upright to the point that Yeri was like seen like kind of holding her in place during I saw some of the that clip. Stuff. There was a clip of uh, Aspa like asking her if she's okay and everything like yeah. that. Yeah. She yeah, she did not look uh she didn't look great. But she still, having said that, wanted to meet the fans and she said uh, that they would be, you know, doing she did the classic line of like I will return and greet you with new music soon or whatever. And that mm. that was kind of that. So I think it was a nice kind of statement of maybe a statement of intent 
or like a reassurance to fans like you know don't worry we're not going anywhere that kind of thing um everyone who well, always wants to anyway. you know kind of demean her character i feel like that's kind of a really strong display of it was professionalism, yeah and right? I, like, yeah, yeah. I, and, and honestly like i didn't <laughs> i didn't really expect that of her um I would not have been at all surprised if she was just like, nah, I ain't feeling it. I'm going to sit this one out. And that was that. But no, she actually did just, she powered through it and, and, and did it, like, I guess, with the intention of making that kind of statement. So yeah, uh, hats off to her for that. And obviously hope she's recovered from whatever was uh, bothering her. Um, yeah, other than that, I think that's kind of it for the, the contract world. We had another member leave TO1. One, one of the new guys who, who joined TO1 after so remember when Woongi and the other guys left or got kicked out or whatever it was and then three new guys joined right one of them has now left so whatever oh, yeah. the what's the what's was. the time span of his entering about a, about a year okay about a year and i mean yeah <laughs> they're going for like the record you think maybe like it's, yeah that I, they've got a while to go before they get close to that but they've been churning uh churning members in and out for a while yes yeah, I don't know what's going on with them or what or their company or whatever it is that's causing so many problems, but clearly something ain't right with them. But yeah. It is what it is. It must just be like really bad management, right? Um I guess, yeah. I mean there's there's all kinds of things that could to be. To have people just like rotating door through a K pop group, I just don't feel like that's uh yeah, uh, unless, um, I th there's like sometimes though you wonder because like wasn't it some of the Luna members never got paid the entire time? Yeah, well that's not were... uncommon. No, no. So I'm saying like, what is the thing that is like making people instantly go nope and just like bounce right. out of the... the? What what is the biggest red flag? Yeah, yeah. it's an interesting because it's not like they're hearing you're not getting paid oh. and they go ah oh, well <laughs> you know I guess I yeah. better pack my bags. Yep. <laughs> like... Yeah. Um. The other, other contract uh, thing was, uh, of course, BTS said uh, Hype came out, came out and said um, BTS have all seven resigned, uh, and they will look to. They said regroup in twenty twenty five. Nice. Um, which has led so Sugar enlisted officially the other day, like two days ago, I think. You know then. So they're really layered um, apart from their military enlistment, then, right? Well, not that much compared to how some groups have done it. Like, okay. it actually, it's it's all kind of been, cause what, like, when did Jin? Because like, Jin went in at like last earlier this year, or was it? Yeah, and then he like the end of last year. The whole scandal was like the vehicles. There were so many vehicles going in and out. Oh, that's not thing, yeah. But um, and then so they basically have said that the other remaining members are all going to announce what their plan is um by the end of this year. So not necessarily enlisting by the end of this year, but they will say when they're planning on doing it. So and since uh, Big Hit said they'll be they'll come out as a full group in 2025, that suggests that within the next kind of eight to nine months or so, all of the remaining members will have have gone in, even how, though that they don't have to. How big do you think that? Well, that makes sense because they'll want to be able to make whole group content as soon yeah, as possible. Yeah, yeah. Like how uh, I I I think it's better like if a one member's in for all to just be like all right let's just like get it done kind get of it done, thing yeah. you know like, I, I I think so too like that's what on and off did right like they they went in as a whole group yeah. and and that was that and um, if anything is gonna make like the comeback implode the universe when they like right, show up again right. you know versus if they came back and it's like oh sorry one member just some one members out two you know? members are out yeah yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, because that's what happened with Suju, right? Like, again, to use him as an example, they, well, they were, <laughs> it was 10 years between each member. Exo had that but, comeback, but it was like, yo, Kai's, Kai's going to join in, yeah. the military or whatever. Exactly. Um, there were also some pretty good uh, reunions that kind of were going around, which, um, just of, of groups of... Oh, actually, I'll say one more. One more contract potential thing is uh, Kepler. There's been the suggestion that they might end up having a longer contract if they can agree to it. But I'm take that with a grain of salt because there was the same stuff around Dice One and I think companies plan stuff long times in advance for the members there was that they probably have. a lot like, more reason for eyes one to have an extended contract because it was so insanely successful true true um but yeah I, I don't know we'll see but it's it's possible 
Oof. Who? See, I was curious about this because I heard about this already. That like, who is the member from all this Kepler stuff that pays off the most from like after disbandment? Do you think? Mm. It's it's harder to say because that, they don't have members who are in like in line for such like big. That's projects. what I'm saying because I can't think of anyone from the group, unlike where you have eyes one and it was obvious that some were going to go debut in like some sort of yeah like the new starship group is going to yeah. be huge like we all could tell that yeah and before i guess they would have thought che one was going to be in rocket punch except she got snagged up by high <laughs> right which was obviously great for her um, yeah <laughs> safe That's from new goodum to to top of like top uh the big Imagine floor. rocket punch for Shay One. What a what a I, mean, I think she definitely would have propelled the popularity massively. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but no, I mean obviously not La Seraphine levels. No. Um. Yeah, I can't think of. Yeah, so I think one thing goes even... runs a foreign country for a bit or something like I don't know. <laughs> like a like a tropico style dictatorship. Like, I mean, well, the one the only one I even know of for sure is um. Yeso and Mashiro, who are who are set to go into Limelight, and Limelight are like you know in that realm of kind of reasonably popular Nugus, wonder, <laughs> but still very much. Do you think they'll so, be like a big boost to popularity? I would assume so, but I don't know by how much. Mm. Um, and then the other one is Hikaru to XG. I've heard that's not gonna. But happen. that that might not happen. Yeah. And, I don't care about XG. So Which is a kind of <laughs> business decision when I heard that's not happening. It's AVEX. Like, what do you expect? I'm like, okay, <laughs> here's the popular winner of competition, yeah, uh, blah, blah, blah. The leaves group joins your group, makes it more popular, right? Like, it's, big, makes it you bigger, think yeah. it's an easy graph to read. Like, Karu, XG combined, pff, you easy. You would think, yeah, you would question speed. mark profit. But... Yeah, like, I don't know, but yeah, apart from that, like I don't know. Um, so I guess we'll we'll see, and we'll, you know, talk about it more kind of closer to that time. I think their contract runs out in like um, May or something like that. So we'll see. Um, but either way, they just had to come back, so you know, go and support that for, we, we for were, now. We were watching the Odd Eye Circle, like another performance video thing, and some of the Lusamble stuff. And while I was watching it, I was just thinking. Like, how did Blockberry screw that up so massively? <laughs> like... I'm, well, a Blockberry even they 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 failed their lawsuit, right? Did you yeah. see that? They like they they tried to stop them using the Lucembol name because it sounds too close to Luna, and the court ruled that not only can they continue to use the name of Lucembol, they can even use the Korean name Idari Sonia, which was like Luna's actual name in Korean, Girl yeah. of the Month, it means. So the blog readers continue to take L after L. Uh, good, good. They, 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 yeah. If anyone deserves it, they deserve it. And then they see that they they posted a, tw a TikTok of them dancing outside the Statue of Liberty, like after that news broke, and it was like, mm, <laughs> I feel like this may have been deliberate. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, remember uh, was it Yojin posted like Dobby is free afterwards. Yeah. Like, mm. Yeah, I just think it's like when you watch those two groups perform separately, you're like, wow, if you combined these, it yeah. would be like... <laughs> it's yeah. like, what an easy success story that would be. Like, yeah, And then, and then you, you add Chew into the mix. I like... know. I, how do you mess it up when it's also including Chew in the mix? Yeah. Chew is like just easy money. Just like throw it into the wild and watch the income return. Like, right. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, oh yeah, so oh yeah, I want to talk about some of the reunions because this is like some nice happy happy news. We had New East uh, posted a picture together like for the first time since the disbandment as a full group, so that they you know were around for ten years. So it's nice to see them all still hanging out and stuff. We got to see brown eyed girls together, all four of them, which is the first time that Guyan has been in a picture on social media for over two years mm. and was looking not dangerously unhealthy which is a good sign because we know That's she's been thing. struggling with some um like drug problems and shit so um did yeah they, good did they for, ever uh, technically disband or anything no they never, they they like, never technically disbanded. just in a limbo basically like 
in the what? In the in the uh, they um, but they actually they were hanging out with them like someone who like they they're like really close with one a person who directed a bunch of their music videos and they they were with them so people are kind of like hmm <laughs> maybe some some it talks the, it is the comeback of like all the, the hags. All the... <laughs> Oh, uh, and then especially close to my heart. Oh, I mean, obviously, Brown Girls are close to my heart, but um, Block B, uh, PO just got discharged from the military today. Uh, and even as like a week ago, the, they were all hanging out together, which is great to see. It's great that Z Coastal has time <laughs> for, for his old boys, you know. Um, they did a performance together, obviously, if for the Marines, like, uh, uh, was it last year or earlier this year, which I tried and failed to get tickets to? Um, so I'm really hoping that we'll get them releasing something because again they never technically disbanded. They just you know had the whole situation. Well, with some the company two members like do way more than the other. Well, yes, but um, yeah, but we hope that it could it could it could happen. So uh, yeah, uh, good talking stuff. about older groups having comebacks and resurgences. Did you see the thing with uh, JYP? What does he do? He's going to create a girl group of 50-year-olds, I think he said. <laughs> I th believe that's what he said, I, I believe. Which is, like, good, good on JYP. Like. <laughs> is this because people were, were mad because he was, like, he, there's some, the girl, who, the youngest girl in that A to K group is, like, born in 2009 or something? Yeah, I right? believe so. I believe Yeah. That. <laughs> He's like, no, I'll debut anyone. Watch me. <laughs> I respect it. I mean, do you think, Jeremy? Well, yeah, I'm. I'm more curious how the man has the time because I I saw he did the A two K thing. Then I saw like there was like a boys played it thing or no no but the boy version of Nitsu or whatever. It's an easy project. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, this man is like cross notions every other like two days or something to film like. Two completely different you know concepts. exactly the kind of man that JYP is. Like he, he would he would have such a like tightly penciled in like routine. He's like, I wake up at six forty three a.m. and I take my vitamins. I allow myself forty eight seconds to defecate, and then I go the, on yeah, to the next. He day. has the yeah. same exact morning routine without a doubt every single morning. Yeah, I remember there was a clip. There's a show where a bunch of like one of those shows where people just they go to like some famous person's house and like live a day with them or whatever mm. it is right it was and who was it, it was like haha -ha somewhere i remember uh maybe din din i feel like din din was there i don't remember anyway I feel like din din is uh, in like every he's random a, variety yeah, he's, clip. but um they yes yeah, so they go to uh to jyp and like see what well see what going on with him basically and like he has like a crazy amount of supplements that he takes and he has like he has like completely blocked in like every hour and knows what he's doing like he wakes up and immediately recites japanese to himself to, because uh, he's like yeah, this is the best time for learning language and stuff like that like he did like a the man has, presentation completely in japanese he's, that. he's motivated I, I gotta respect it yeah but you can't you know I mean, you can't be successful if you, you don't have like that the, mentality uh, a2k did you no, see, I saw some of the like clips and, and like episode of it. And I've it's so funny. He's always like driving around like Malibu and like a Bentley in the beginning, <laughs> and like you As know, he the, the like hair flow. And it's such so, the intro of like the episodes are so funny. Like a different supercar he's driving sometimes. Like each I love show. it. I love him. And then he he when they showed like footage of himself, he said like world's superstar and had like him on that. Yeah, yeah. JY, JY, the Asian soul, fuck, whatever he calls himself. I've, I've touched that man. I've held, I've not held his, I've, I've high fived that man. That's something I can. Didn't you see take him playing grade. basketball or something, right? I mean, I saw him in a show. He's, he's played basketball. He played basketball on the show I just mentioned. No, so, no, okay. I, I thought, played. oh, no, you told me before he entered like a basketball competition. Yeah, no, yeah, he, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Saw an, yeah. I saw on Instagram that he had like entered into some random basketball tournament, like relatively near my house. I didn't personally see it, but I just saw it. I was like, what the hell? I imagine you're just playing basketball with your homies. And <laughs> JYP turns up and just smokes you all. Like, he's a tall dude, right? I think, like, I don't uh, think so. No? He's, he's, Maybe he no, just he... looks tall because he's standing next to like tiny uh idols all the time. Yeah, I, I, like... I think I think he's under six, I think he's like five, ten, five, eleven. No. I would guess. He just looks like 
a lengthy oh, it's average, ball person. Average yeah, he's got a good frame. But yeah. <laughs> We're just, Sorry, we're just the description. JYP body now. Anyway, let's move on. Um, the one one other thing, a piece of news, or that's we should talk about is um, Kingdom, who we've uh, reacted to on on here before. The you know dudes who have like the most over the top concept. Yeah, concept each, each one of them has had like a different king's concept in the music videos and stuff. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it, it's and they've gone all around the world and done this, and they, they've gotten into into trouble before in korea specifically for doing the a japanese themed concept because of course but no one gave no one cares about that in the west because like you know it doesn't affect us in the same way um but this time they uh they did land and put upon one that it was kind of inevitable that it would cause controversy and they went to like the kind of uh from the looks of it a middle eastern in themed uh concept and the, and the the you know when you get to this kind of area and it's always so vague and it's kind of like well it's it's bound to cause issues but um <laughs> so what they did is they they released the uh they released the like album preview mm. and the cover basically looks like the cover of well, like a cover of the quran the the holy book in islam um, and obviously, like any kind of in Islam, like any kind of like mockery or, or f- false representation of it is like a deep uh, offense. But what I will say to excuse whoever, and well, I'm not really to excuse. What I will say to sort of uh, understand where they've come, where they where they were coming from. If you search like old book into Google, <laughs> or you search in like Arabesque style book, you will get covers of either of the crown or of stuff with a similar kind of binding yeah. and stuff like that. so i can see them they just went oh i'm gonna look up like old books like arab style yeah that looks good and just took that and went with that but uh, i, I don't feel like think... with the amount of backlash there always is to some things happening like this you've got to double check you got to double check yeah especially before it ends up in a music video it's like come on <laughs> it's it wasn't the video for, it, well we don't know what the video is going to be like it's, okay, it's, well, it's just, just, a, just like it's literally like they announced movie. what the album cover looks like that's like one of the first things whenever a comeback's announced they're like oh yeah the album is going to be look like this it will have these inclusions in it gotcha. and then they start doing their music video teasers and the highlight mentally i guarantee that. it's probably like in the music video and they're like figuring it out might how to disappear like right now you know they're it might get worse um but what's been interesting is is actually the speed of the response uh, and the nature of the response from um from gf entertainment which is uh kingdom's company and that they've said uh they right away apologized and you know said you know the usual thing you'd expect was it wasn't our intention to make mockery of any, any people's face you know we respect everyone we're gonna we're gonna change it up not only have they changed up the album design they actually then revealed that they have put, recalled and disposed of seventy thousand albums that they had printed in in advance, which for a group like Kingdom is like a lot. That's a lot, a lot. Like that's more than I think they would sell normally. I guess they figured so, probably if it's it's going to be a bad enough scandal or something. Well, they've already yeah. It's like they've already printed it, so they had no choice, right? It's yeah. it's so they've put themselves out. And printing seventy thousand albums is an, is no uh, insignificant expense. Um, so they put themselves up in a pretty big way for this. And I do have to kind of, you know, tip my hat um, to that because I feel like a lot of companies might have just said, well, we're sorry, but it's done now. So yeah, it's, it's already printed. Is. Like, um, it's unavoidable yeah. now. Yeah. So, I, I, yeah, I think as, as responses go, it's a pretty good one. Um, for me personally, like I said, I, I don't think they were um, going out of their way to, you know, mock Islam. I think that's historically been a fairly bad career move for people (laughs) um no and it's not like (laughs) Like, i thought at first maybe you were gonna tell me maybe the song we don't know anything yeah we don't know anything the song yet i guess and then like because they always have a king theme type like one of them is someone from history type of like theme thing going on i was like oh i wonder if they just picked like some really bad character in like history and it was like very far from aladdin yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) Could you imagine if they did that? Oh my god! But well, yeah, the only thing we've seen with that, uh, actually, there will be like new teasers in like an hour. But um, they just they just released like a picture of like a sand dune with a camel and a dude riding it. So God knows what they're going for. God knows. We'll see. Why is it um, always? That just seems like the most. The depiction. Sorry. Well, dude, like, 
it's like that thing where it's like whenever any scene has to be in the Middle East in like any movie ever, you have like that same like Phrygian No matter what, like without like sitar doing like some run, you know, like Yeah, yeah. It's like always one of the same like two scales. And then it's like, yeah. So the stereotype it's, it's always like the breakdown from uh, Holy Wars, uh, Megadeth, like dun 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 exactly or they need to uh, hire like culture check people at like every k-pop company like <laughs> yeah it wouldn't be a bad idea and just have some some uh, you know chronically online twitter users to just make sure that about every single it possible really would be as simple as hiring like a chronically online teenager on twitter or something you'd be so you'd be sad they, they know everything yeah. that yeah. that it could be a scandal like no um there's also the well there's two other news points things so one is that um some of the boys and stray kids were involved in a minor car accident mm. nothing um nothing serious like they got treated kind of as a precaution but they're all fine um but some of the members are having um they're pulled out of schedules for about a week just as a precaution so like instead of a full stray kids performance at some event it's just going to be the three ratchet boys because they weren't there uh, and S- Sungmin unfortunately had to have his birthday live cancelled, and that's probably the saddest, <laughs> the saddest part of it. So yeah. sorry, Sungmin. But um, yeah, you know, but it's anytime there's a, ac- a car accident involving people, like we had um, Tail from NCT the other week was in a motorbike accident and stuff, and he was uh, had to go to hospital and stuff for it. And it's like, you know, you it makes it brings back memories of certain car accidents that have happened that have been a lot worse in, mm. in K-pop, should we say? So. It always is a bit scary, but um, glad they're okay. And then uh, the other piece of news is about uh, Nyon's mom's boyfriend <laughs> or ex-boyfriend, which is a funny story. This one, when you see it, like uh, Blueberry told me about this one or whatever, and just like reading it in the chat made me feel like I went you think, dumber for like. Yeah, like you're like what? What? Yeah. So, well, do you want to give a give the rundown since you read about it? <laughs> It's, if I'm remembering correctly, her mother's ex-boyfriend basically said he paid, like, for a lot of stuff while pre-debut, right? Yeah. It basically like, was like, I want to sue... He's tried to sue Nyan or Nyan's mother for the money back, like, right? Yeah. The dude, like, if, it seems like he literally pulled out receipts that dated back to 2009. And was like, look, I paid for this tuition. I paid for these dance classes. I paid for this. I paid for that. You took my credit card and just used it whenever you wanted. Uh, you racked up this amount of money. I w- and he <laughs> sat, sat down and worked out exactly how much everything was. I mean, fair play to the man for keeping his accounts that well organized. Because uh, I sure as shit don't. Yeah, just like, uh, uh, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I like look at my bank statement. I'm like, what the hell was that? I don't remember spending this. But, uh, <laughs> but. And then he was like, "Yeah, we we split up clearly. We were never um, married, so there's no like you know divorce settlement or anything like that. But uh, pay up, I want that money back." Um, which essentially just feels like someone being. It's like I don't know if you ever have been in a relationship where you've bought your partner something really nice, like a nice watch or earrings or whatever. And then you break up like a month later and you're like, oh, I really regret buying you that nice thing now. I want, yeah. I want the money back. I could, I could have used that money. Mm. It's like being salty about that, but just over an extensive yeah, like, period. Then taking it to a lawsuit <laughs> level is just like... And, and losing at, mm-hmm. at that. Well, rightfully so. Of course he did, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> so, I mean, it, I mean it, there's not much else to say about it, but it's just such a bizarre thing to see... Um, Nyan's name kind of uh, included on. I feel like Nyan has some of the like weirdest, weirdest, things, weirdest yeah. scandals in K-pop, like because none of it her fault really. 
No. The other one is a crazy person f- following her from Germany around on flights and everything else. The, yeah. This one is her mom's ex boy. <laughs> it's, it's so yeah. stupid that when you hear it out loud and read it, it's like, how did it get to court? Right, yeah. I mean, I think in Korea, like, courts will take pretty much anything. Mm. So there's that. But, um, yeah just bizarre bizarre stuff um but obviously nothing nothing has come of it so i think that's pretty much it for news do you think much... i just like someone had who do you think had to inform her about that probably her mom right i would imagine so yeah just, just imagine being informed about that she must have just been like i don't even have time to hear something this stupid i imagine right she now. i mean i imagine she was just like okay how much is the lawyer going to cost? And then just cack out pays that to her mom. <laughs> and it's like, well, that's yeah. done. Like, you know. <laughs> I want to know day. what his lawyer w- was thinking. <laughs> like, that's... <laughs> well, I like to imagine that um, the, he was like outlining the case without mentioning who it was about. And he was like, yes, yeah, so I'm really upset. I was with this woman for like 14 years. I spent all this money on her and her kid. And then, like, she's left me, and I'm just, I'm like, I'm out like a million bucks or whatever over that, that period. It fucking sucks. I want my money back. And the guy, the lawyer's like, okay, uh huh. Well, I don't think you have much. And then he's like, the girl's, the, my, like, my ex's kid is twice his nine. And he's like, yeah, I think you have a case. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. I think you've got a case. He's yeah. Taking um, a chance. Sign here. Yes, my fee is 50%. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine. <laughs> but. He's just being he a, a salty person. He can say. I guess uh, that was like all that happened news-wise in K-pop. I'm sure there's always like literally any moment something just 50-50 somehow has an update. Actually, I think they do. Think they, do. they do have an update if we want to talk about that. The, the compilation album that uh, released and it's like someone posted a video of them unboxing it and it looks like it's just the most like half it looks like if you just get one of those default templates of how of graphic design stuff Hmm. it's just so many blank pages and just like a page with like a a faded image of like that they used from a year ago and then just the lyrics to the songs it's like 200 pages long and it's just a complete waste of paper and fans are boycotting obviously and yeah. And then another thing, I think the Givers was found liable again for something legally with a tract, I believe it was like just announced. Oh, really? The other day. Yes. I must have missed this. I think it was something to do with funds being used improperly or something like that. So there's like even more legal trouble for them. I searched the givers and got a video of a kid hugging a <laughs> hugging it's a chick. Like the givers attract. Um, it, it's ah, really shut. attract wins the court case of suspending copyright fees to Anson Hill from the givers. Is that is that what you're talking about? Maybe it was that. I believe there was like even more legal trouble for some type of. Uh, I don't know. There's such. It's like such a cluster of a case of just constant issues. Like I feel like everyone involved is just ruined any possibility of like anything so yeah out. they discovered that Ansung Il, CEO of the Givers embezzled company funds in the process of carrying out a track service but that's what they it was were, they replied for the seizure of copyright and in this regard the Seoul Eastern District Court has approved the decision so he embezzled so, some of the money yeah, yeah so Ansung Il from the Givers is revealed to be the biggest of all the shitheads essentially big shot big Pikachu surprise face right you got the find out yeah quite <laughs> and that guy was there you know advising the families of the members and everything it's like come on, come on. yeah but he's using their money for whatever yeah terrific now it just makes i feel like that kind of thing happening makes it so impossible for the members to have any type of road back yeah it's done it's just like they can't i don't see any possibility like they ruined yeah. their careers basically like and that they were willing to do that they said themselves that that's what they wanted to do so <laughs> don't see what happens like 
good luck. I don't know. Yeah. You're probably not going to catch that type of fire again. Like, no, especially no internationally. Yeah. Yep. That's a depressing one. Let's, I guess that's the end on that note. news. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. Continuing on then. So, next segment will be our review of August in uh, music, which yes. is going to be a bit of a throwback because we're late as hell on this. Cause You're going to just have to. What, go so, with... I've got the list. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Like, go through the list. When I looked at this, I was like, oh my god, it was that long ago. Like, I, I couldn't believe that some of these songs were when they were. <laughs> um, oh, it feels like that recent for you. No, it feels like these were months ago. Mm. Like, so for example, uh, the start of August, we had, I think the biggest release on the, on the 1st of August was Young Tax Form. My goat, my trot legend, Young Tax who I went and saw in the, the same venue that we saw Taeon, which should give you some indication as to his, his popularity, his pull. Um, and it was, he put on a great show, and the album was great too. I, I think probably wasn't quite as... Uh, I didn't enjoy it quite as much as the last one he did, last album he did, but it's still really, really good. Some really good songs on there. And, like, I feel like he does trot in, like, a modern enough way, or he blends it with... Um, differing genres in an interesting enough way that I feel like it can appeal to people in a broader sense, mm. you know? Like, not every one of his songs is, like, uh, the kind of old, old like old man in a karaoke trot song, you know? No, he has, like, like he a had, kind of rock trot. He has, like, yeah, like a rock and roll -y type, like, like classic rock and roll kind of vibe, and he has, like, some cooler, more interesting instrumentation ones and stuff like that. So, yeah, he's got um got some substance to it you know he is I, I think i think he's a dope artist every time you show me you have one yeah. of his like fame made acrylic light sticks right well i i got given one at the concert by the ajima who was next to me but she took it back at the uh, <laughs> and she, I, 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 afterwards, I yeah i didn't think i i wasn't sure if i was going to be able to keep it or not but she uh she took it back mm. um it's still very but, nice of her yeah she was she couldn't believe it she couldn't believe her eyes when i sat down like, Tom you know, British like man shows up to young a British fan who's about 20, 30 years younger than the average one of his fans. Like, mm. and she was like, she was like getting, she's like, oh, she's like, you see this motherfucker? Like, who's this guy? Like, what is he doing here? Like, couldn't believe it. Um, and then when I like was singing along and dancing along to the song, she was like, oh my god, this guy's nuts. Like, <laughs> yeah, I do great imagine show. that's a sight that man. they've like never come across. Oh, undoubtedly, yeah. As for at a, a, venue, a gig like that, it must be like he's in the wrong spot. Like, <laughs> um, like excuse me, sir, the seraphim is in here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we also had uh, on the second we had Undi, the Flash. Ah, mm -hmm. saving okay. everyone. Of us. I'm doing Queen. Sorry. Oh, the Flash. Beep beep beep. Right. It was I good. Won. Yeah, it was good, but it. You know, it wasn't as good as her, some of her other songs. <laughs> but it's I a still high really bar. Enjoyed it. Yeah, I think it the whole quality of like the catalog is super solid. Like, yeah, yeah. She, I thought she came. She said the other day she was like, "I didn't like the the whole album that Underwater is on." She's like, "I didn't like that album." What? Yeah, I'm like, what? <laughs> she didn't the like whole Simulation. Thing slaps. She, I'm like, what? And yeah, Simulation like, is hands down the best B side. Like she's I'm like, I'm like, 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 your best song. <laughs> she was, she was like, yeah. She's like, I didn't like it, but the CEO liked it, so I went, I went along with it, and I'm like, oh, that's devastating. That's I'm devastated because that yeah. whole really is so good. Yeah, yeah. I own that. Like I bought that one. That's yeah. Yeah, um, we just had Psychers, which is a. Uh, the Block B and 80s is a younger brother group. Um, so their second release, Do or Die, I think. Um, I saw them live uh, in Inchon with Ava. Not like their concert, but they were at like a, one of the like big K-pop festival events, you know. Um, and they have like crazy energy. The rap line is really strong and they have, uh, they're, they're, you can tell that they're, they're very good dancers. 
but they still, I think, need to find songs that really hit. And also their live was so inconsistent. Like, it was like you'd have some of the vocal parts and you you could not hear. You could barely even hear the backing track, like, let alone the vocals. Then the rappers would come, they'd be like, yeah, yeah. And then, like, the, volume, the mic volume was, like, so high. And it was like, then it goes to the pre-chorus and you just hear it go, like, and just, like, it, the disparity of tone like, yeah oh, no, they just pure like how much they were how much vocals were coming through like how much they were singing like how 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 lip synky they were basically mm. but you they're see rookies, that so I give stray them kids uh the some of the members are like rapping right into the microphone and and the main mm. vocalist really sings hard into the microphone and then felix has like uh part come in and he has like the one like this you know across the face uh, and then yeah, it's like yeah. complete silence when his part comes in yes yeah, and it's like so what is going on in the audio like and the you, you obviously had like before the performance the opportunity to hear and sound check everything well you do a, a pre-recording rehearsal whatever yeah, yeah. Like, i'm like how does this sense. so consistently happen like someone should point it out at least one time like can we just crank the felix just bump mic them up? up like yeah just pump yeah. that up yeah, it doesn't make any sense, but there you go. But um, yeah, I think they've got they 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 have potential. It's one of those groups. I, I'm mentioning them because I think they have a lot of potential. I'm, I think they will. There will be a time where they have a song that really hits, uh, and then we'll see. Um, speaking of groups that are kind of realizing their potential, we had uh, Nine Eye, who you'll know as having had members who were on Boys Planet, especially So On, who went pretty far into into Boys Planet, but also Jiho and uh, Winnie. Um, they had their song. Uh, what's it called? Turn, turn it off which was like sweet tune produced uh 80s and van one of the members and 80s retro gloriousness so obviously i loved it um and they've had a couple bangers at this point so i really so like it you say 80s and i loved it my brain's like and that was a lie or something but but i know you have like some of the like i said 80s as in like the decade <laughs> okay 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 I'm like, just but even just the words i have yeah sense. i know it sounds strange um yeah, we also had uh, Mamma Moo Plus. Um, I... Give me your thoughts. I was a little disappointed in that one, especially considering mm. who it was, just because mm. there's such a high bar to live up to, right? I actually liked it quite a lot. Did you? Um, okay. Uh, you know what bothered I, me about it? There's that switch up, and I'm just like... Yes, yeah, I know what you mean. It's a bit abrupt. Where but there's... Mm -hmm. It's like there's, a there's switch part... up to be one, right? Like, yeah, yeah. There, there's parts in those songs which um, really make it evokes like that older style of Mamamoo songs, you know. And I really like that. And I think that they both uh, they both do it. They do enough to keep the. It, I didn't. I didn't feel like I was missing parts that we in in there, you gotcha. know. Um, that were were they the best songs that anything my mom has ever released? No, but I think they were good, and I think I would I still prefer listening to them than I do most of the more recent Mama Moo releases. Like I would rather listen to that than I would listen to like Aya or Dinga. I love those songs. But you know the thing is, I when I saw Mama Moo and they performed their songs, I was going nuts. So I didn't yeah, even know. No, but I, feel I, like I still don't listen to are, them. Like both the songs, just names are absolutely bangers. Like I just. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's no, it's no piano man, is it? No, <laughs> but, such a, but it's I, like, it's not, I hate it because it's such a typical like. Mama but it's Moo like tech, uh, but... if Metallica releases music and me going like, you know, this just is. This isn't. Uh, it's no one. Yeah. Concerts. This is not. Yeah, right. You know, like this. Yeah. Is... yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> If it slaps, it slaps, obviously. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, I thought it was okay. I, I, yeah, because I wasn't blown away. But um, I, th I thought I actually thought it was better than I was uh, expecting. I was kind of worried it would it would be crap. But, yeah. but um, maybe I got a little bit spoiled because I was listening to that album on uh, on the way to uh, meet Kiss of Life, and on the way back because I was like halfway through it. So I was in a good mood, <laughs> and that uh, probably influenced it. I was so much talking about like the whole album like uh, just that like single release they had dang dang yeah that that song i guess i expected like that's the one that had like the weird uh transition right uh so there was dang dang which was the first one and then there was um 
da, 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 da. I like this. Mm, Starry C. I was which one, but it had a switch up in there that just made me throw out of the song, basically. Yeah. But, but either, either way, I, I mean, just put this. Um, it's called Moon yeah, so Plus, plus and I feel like why did they not just call it Moon Solar or like Solar Moon? Like, yeah, they could have. They could have. My movie Plus is lame as hell. Yeah, I yeah. agree. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'll give a I'll give one a, a token indie shout out at this point to Cooing. Um, she released an album which was just it was it was actually not an album it was just the song I think she's released a couple of songs in quite a session. When did she release? Oh no, I'm talking shit now. She released a song called The Milky Way. That was back in March. She released something here called uh, That okay. Summer Night. Never mind. Your but, March out of my <laughs> I'm sorry, but. Listen to Kuming in general. That's my, that's my take. Anyway, um, I will, however, shout out Nye now for releasing Hong Leon, which we checked out on the live. Yeah, which we is, did. I remember that. You, you said that was like one of her best songs. I in think so, yes. And it had, um, definitely um, a banger. The video was kind of like. Uh, I guess she kind of has a bit of gritty style sometimes, usually. To she the, she uh, does. She has. This she one has just had seemed like it is even more so, huh? Like just the some of the styling, I guess. Onion videos yeah. are a trip. I always remember that one where, like, the black kind of, like, darkened room and the chairs all stacked up kind of thing. I forget which yeah. song that was, but that video is such a trip. Just she has some pretty trippy, pretty trippy videos, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I did think this this song was one of her best in a, yeah, in a, in a while. And, like, it was very much a kind of return to, like, the classical, like, traditional instruments that she's been doing and mm -hmm. stuff. She's been doing a lot of rock focus stuff lately, which is which has been great. But I think she's at her best when she's hitting that uh, traditional style. It's definitely so, like a more unique sphere she exists. Yeah, she for, for sure. Um, so we also had the debut of Rise, the new SM boy group. So give me your give me your thoughts. That Get happened. a guitar. Did I see it that? Was, yeah, you must have done surely. Dude, if I did, I don't remember. So I don't know if that's a good thing or like. A... I, I I don't. It, it didn't stick out much to me either. Mm. And it, it it was okay, but yeah, I don't know. It's only a single, I guess, and it's maybe a bit of a teaser for the what what can come later, I guess. But like, yeah, I didn't. I don't. It barely stuck out to me at all. Um, speaking of bitter disappointment, we also had so many as long awaited to come back. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so listen, she did her thing. She did what she wanted to do, okay? And that's fine. I thought... She's an absolute banger at the end of the album. The way, yeah. That song smacks. And I'm like, yeah. yo, so I mean, if you have this in your locker, why why can't you do this <laughs> more? But, you know, yeah. it's, she's doing her thing. She's expressing herself how she wants, but... Yeah, I thought um, I, I genuinely, I genuinely thought it was one of the worst pieces of popular Korean music I've heard in some time. <laughs> Both fast forward and gold, gold, gold. Especially gold. I, hope gold, I don't mind like fast was... forward too much. It, it has catchy moments and stuff, but the the gold, gold, gold song is or yeah, is... yeah. <laughs> that was not it. I'm sorry. The video and song are. Just... Not for me, man. But, no. uh, I don't even know who it's for, really. But yeah, yeah, I guess. I just like, yeah. I don't even know how to describe it. <laughs> like you have to watch it, I guess, to really to understand like what we're talking about. Yeah, it's uh, it's not great. It's not. Um, it's not. It's not K-pop. Like I, don't, I, I guess it would just be like I don't know what it is. Like, yeah. It's, it's well. Like, it's like, well, to me, it's like if someone took money and made a whole album of that. But you like money, I so. I like money, so. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> this is, I just don't feel like this has the the riz of Lisa doing money. It doesn't have the riz, yeah. 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 Lisa has got riz. It's true. Um, what else do we have? We had uh, Joey Yodi with Taxi. 
You remember? Yeah, I do. I liked that. <laughs> you like I Yuri? Liked, uh, yeah, no, I liked it a lot. And I like uh, the short blonde hair Yuri also was... We're focused on the music only. <laughs> I understand. I'm just saying, like, that was a cataclysmic event. In, in my, uh, no, in actually, I, I thought it was a really solid EP, actually. I thought, I, um, yes. I thought a number of the songs were pretty good. I, th I think uh, Bit Bits of Taste might have been my favorite. Uh, I don't remember exactly. Um... <laughs> But yeah, no, solid. I think she's. We've we said about um, about Yuri a bunch, really. That she's just kind of consistently been putting out good music since uh, since Sleeping Eyes won. So like, you know, fair enough. Yeah. Do your thing. Um, then we had, of course, V, Mister Sensual Man himself, releasing his. Uh, well, trickling in his songs kind of one at a time, and then eventually dropping the first. <laughs> It's funny to me, he's like, uh, just the sad boy music in the middle of dating Jenny from, like, Blackpink. Yeah, and he like... enjoys talking about, like, oh, like, wanting to be loved and stuff, and I'm like, it sounds a bit, bro, you're doing fine. Yeah, but, like, <laughs> where is this feeling coming from? <laughs> yeah. But, um, I, I, I do, I, all of the, the songs on there were very similar, um, hmm. but I think that they were all very, like, they were solid songs. It's, it's his, yeah, uh, style, it's completely, right? it completely matches him. And I really like that he just did something that he is clearly very comfortable doing. He didn't try and make himself do something to fit like any expectations or like make him do anything that like, oh, this won't be popular or this won't sell well. Obviously, that would be ridiculous. But um, he sound like one point seven mil in a day. <laughs> but like, yeah, He's a uh, it's like a yeah, but you know what I mean, right? Like, I think because there was, you know, there was backlash around um, Jim in the song and stuff, and, the, and, yeah. and you know, you know what it's like, right? So, it's, but yeah, I think um, I really enjoy it. I think hmm, probably hard to dethrone J Hope in general, but I think this was like just a really enjoyable couple songs to listen to, just. And just be in a groove, you know, something you can put on late at night and just kind of enjoy his background music. Um, so yeah, fair play, V, Mr. Tae Hyung. Um, what else did we have? God, we have so much random stuff that I've just like forgotten about. What else? What else? What else? August was. I've I've had releases this month that are like going to be in my top 10 possibly i don't know that august had that well that's what here's another one that's always worth talking about we had uh don't good at me ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> we had, had stacy don't think another another mini the performance video for i like that one too it's i don't know how stacy keep doing it i mean i do know because they have incredible yeah. production pedigree by them Stacey but they makes... they get the biggest earwormy songs mm -hmm. like i was just constantly in my head doing on like, paper bubble should be a song where i'm just like oh, don't put this in front of me or something like that. right you know? it's like, like exactly it's like it's like so it literally bubble like bubble gum pop and it's yeah. like that would, oh i should hate this but i can't help but the enjoy video it was like really interesting uh I know, I know story. Too. Uh, like you should watch it i, I thought they they did a really good job like making an interesting music video for it too okay the, the one you were thinking of is uh not like you yes that was a banger yeah, yeah they're just i mean stacy are just good <laughs> i think we can just kind of conclude that they, they are, are like good. um like i've said it before like the because there was a time when i thought they could like be the top of the fourth Jen, like initially yeah just because, like their releases were just like back to back like so solid and the and b sides were so good on the album and stuff i was like this yeah is, yeah like really solid group i mean i think they've they've done incredibly well to be doing as well as they are still yeah. at this at this point i right. mean in hindsight now obviously them being on top of the fourth gen is like on but, top of is obviously too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but, but it's, I it's like never they possible. Sit in a really comfortable but position there. Yeah, they, yeah. they really do, and this album is uh, sold extremely well. It's charted really well. Um, it's like, yeah, they just keep, and it's like you know, like you said, after that that initial run, I think when they kind of had a dip with um, 
a beautiful monster in terms I don't of like understand that, dude, I know I, I, people so are, are crazy. Good. That song was great. Um, but yeah, but it, it did kind of drop off, and I was thinking, oh, maybe this is going to be like the kind of not going that well, or whatever. But they, you know, bounced straight back, um, and then just kind of kept kept it up. So yeah, fair play. I think they're already. I think they already are like million sellers in, in total yeah, or something. Have... Like. Very, very impressive. Teddy Bear, like to this, right, have all been like mm -hmm. successful songs for them, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the key. Yeah. So, yeah, fair play, say, so, I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's one way of putting it. Um, uh, we of course had uh, the re debut of uh, of Brave Girls as BB Baby Girls. girls. <laughs> BB Girl, not Baby Girl, Jesus. Baby Girl! <laughs> <laughs> um and it was like it was quintessentially them like it just it sounded exactly like a brave girl song both of the both the track the track and the b-side i think were just very them lemonade right yeah though having anytime anyone says well lemonade i go straight to dream Logan. i don't know like, if you've but... seen the most like recent video upload the bb girls had but i like had a mini stroke on stream I mean, I've seen you have many a mini stroke no, on stream. No, I know, but just go really after this. Pod apparently, that the apparently there is a group. It's a group called BB Girls that uh, have four monthly listeners on Spotify, and they last released an album in 2020 called Maelstrom. What <laughs> sounds like? I need. I need. To, I need to know. <laughs> Maelstrom is like a only makes me think of like the cyber gang from Cyberpunk 2077, like the one that modify themselves or whatever. Something like that. Anyone who knows like that, the, right. the BB Girls video I'm talking about, I think you might suffer, Oliver, if you watch that one. Okay, no, I will I will refrain from suffering. Uh, I'm gonna link it to you after this. Uh, <laughs> um okay so we had we're like just past the midway point of the month and so oh my guys we've got um esper better things <sighs> it's a, a very western song i i was so excited because esper has two of my favorite songs of the year i know okay. i'm sorry three okay Three of my favorite songs of the year have been released by Espa this year. You can't just count the Tetris OSD twice, you know. No, I understand. I'm, I'm talking <laughs> about Unhappy and um, Welcome to My World. Okay. Like that trilogy of Tetris, those two songs to me are, are phenomenal. Some of the best Espa to ever be put out. Like, okay. sitting really comfortably in my top ten. And... This was just not that. <laughs> like, no. like I was like so excited because of that. I was like, Espa's years just killing it. Like I'm loving the Espa releases, and mm -hmm. like this one, I get. I guess I could just jog this up to like uh, a summer song from Espa. That's and it, all it it's, feels it's, like it's, to it's, me, right? It's yeah. like it's it just one of those... feels like a summer. A song I, I forget about maybe. I know what you mean. It's it's a very, it's a very cookie cutter song, right? Mm. It's. But I, I did find myself enjoying it, nevertheless. The I would find my, this kind of, it's a catchy melody. Is, I, was I do it. enjoy the, because um, it's kind of a weirder thing from the, the Espa in your da, da, da stadium, like, sell out, da, 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 thing. Like, bit of bragging, like, yeah. Yeah, but, but like, the flex from Karina part or whatever. I respect that. Um, i tell you what, there was, there was some, re uh, some remixes of it that have dropped. Uh, in the past couple of weeks, they're actually pretty good. Normally, you get remixes of K pop songs that tend to be just terrible, but guess, these ones are actually quite good. I have the the <laughs> problem is just the, the, note. the over and over of the God, better things. It's a bit, a bit repetitive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My head just it's like it's like in this endless rotation. It's it's it's, it's like that. Um, it's like the the vir the virability thing. It's like um. It's gone from let's make a catchy dance. It can become a dance challenge that goes viral to like let's make something that can be a TikTok sound that you can play yes, in the back of a thirty-second like video. You can play over and, over Let, again, and if it's really repetitive and stuff, it just gets in people's heads, yeah. and that's kind of what you want. Um, 
So yeah, uh, on the same day, we had Everglow's long-awaited comeback with Slay, Slay. which was Slay like the... I'm gonna need to. I'm gonna need a, just a clip of you doing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> there's an emote. Uh, it was the most Everglow sounding song ever. Right? I love like, that. It was just. Never it's just, you know, just came back as if nothing had happened. Never change song. Everglow. Yes, change. Go back it. to doing Lady yeah. Dark. <laughs> I love it. I love Everglow. It's just like I walk in the club and it has just hit sound. It gets okay? gets your bussy bopping. Dude, we. Uh, I've always said from day one, like Everglow is like the ultimate. Like I love that like club jam sound yeah you, that you you have said that i will like, confirm like all the way from uh audios and stuff i remember when that like drop and i was like Pah. you know just like the da 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 like i love when they do that and honestly yeah. shion's like um me my girls we about to blow your mind like that i fucking love that part i do i just uh, I think that part enough. Is that part slays? Okay, there you go. I've okay, you said it. It's the. I mean, I think I've also been vocal that I don't really like the kind of typical EDM type song, so I it's not for me. Can understand. Sometimes I don't like depending on the tone of the group or anything. That Everglow just they, sounds they, they so sell it well. good they doing do. it, and they, they, they it look well. so good doing it. Like they are yeah. like meant <laughs> to do that style. If there's uh -huh. a group that's meant to fit in that niche, it's them. Like they... They're almost like a uh, female stray kids in a way in that you kind of know mm. what you're gonna get. But, you know, but you're, gonna, like you're gonna get a hard hitting quality of song. like hitting. And, and they, yeah, like they they are very good at it, and that's that's kind of why they built that popularity around it. So yeah, I mean, it, it's just uh, it's not for me. Yeah, I mean, like I don't hate it. It's just not. I, uh, I'm still like, if it comes on in the club, I'm going nuts. But <laughs> like, Slay, you know, no, I, I'm there. Like, you know, but like, yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, the outro is like really. Yes, I, I do. Too. I do remember the outro. It, the, the, the outro hits really good after kind of a bit of the. Again, it goes down to like Shion kind of having a really beautiful singing part like, and leading them into Slay. Slay! Like builds up da, 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 and then does like the full drop in, you know? Like, I, like it is um, tailored to me. Like, they're actually just setting up for a Christmas uh, song, which will also <laughs> be called Slay, but spelled the other way. And I have been <laughs> pretending Mia does not have that haircut for about two months now. I think Mia herself has been pretending she doesn't have that haircut for about two she months. She may not have liked it, but boy, dude, did everybody Everyone. else. Yeah, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> uh, um, and on the same day was, uh, was Jihyo's uh, solo debut. So, which was good. It wasn't incredible, but it was good. There I were some good songs the, on there. Obviously, by God, Jihyo, like, the, the video was... I'm mercifully free of any of this, fortunately. Um, I just heard the song. But I liked it. Uh, I guess I just didn't know what to expect. Yeah, she could she could have gone in a couple of different ways with this one. And I think the way, what, the direction she took it in, I think, was um, was good and probably yeah, better than it, it could have been. Like, let me sing like I'm the leader twice. Or let me do twice songs by myself kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely like not twice feeling at all. The song, yeah, which is a good thing yeah. if you're doing solo music to not just sound like you're absolutely doing your music, which I feel like is something that that Nyon didn't really capture in the same way for the most part. I would part. say, in Nyon's case, like one of the best business decisions ever made, or something for you know, sure. Like, and that's how big is pop? Like, pop is fucking huge, like, pop, I feel pop, like pop, did, is... pop did numbers, yeah, yeah. Um, I think the, the my favorite song on there, I think, was probably Nightmare, I think it was. Um, which is the last track? But I, I think I remember. I remember liking Broom. Don't want to go back. I think I, I, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was a solid, um, a solid race. I think I was kind of pleasantly surprised actually by how much I ended up enjoying it. So, uh, her play, uh, to Jisho as well. Um, yeah, well, I mean, you know, she has the di the talent. It's just the songs being there. Yeah, it's like. Well, yeah, exactly. Um. Oh yeah, we had Akmu, of course, coming back after 
being out for a minute <laughs> as well. It was a good Acme release. It's not like one of their all time like <laughs> classics or anything like that. To, to tell that to Korea, bro, you, that song is everywhere right now. No, like I understand. I feel like <laughs> stylistically, they always release something that that like is going to be uh, all over the place or something, you know. But yes, although, but having said that, I, I, I'm not mistaken. Wasn't the last thing they the last album they released was "How Can I Love the Heartbreak"? That like just beautiful but like very mournful sorry featuring right oh no, no you're right that was the one they did yeah, yeah the one with naka on it and stuff yeah, like that yeah that's, that, that is that true was the most that, that, that was after the ballady one yeah, but yeah. that was still um there's some interesting times there but th this one felt a bit like older well, more like, old had, style, like, like an absolute banger solo album in between oh he did yeah. too, like... he did um but yeah, yeah, this uh, this one was it's, it, it felt very old style like, and I think, and that really kind of of Korea loves that. So it's it's, just, it's had the perfect all kills. It's uh, course, it's doing yeah. it's Akuma doing well. <laughs> but yeah, like I'm gonna just yeah, they keep killing it. So fair play. Um, what else did we have? We had a new song from Hyoyeon, which was sounded like a Hyoyeon song. <laughs> Don't just gloss over um, that quickly. I mean, yeah, like, what else to say about it? Uh, yeah, I guess I don't have much to add. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we had on the same day we had um, NCT dropping Golden Age, which was the pre-release for the album, which dropped later in the same month. So we could talk about that. We had Yerin from G Friend, and we had High Key. NCT song was what it was. Let's talk about Yerin. <laughs> no, 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 no! I want to go. I want to. I need to say this because I have a lot of. I had a lot of feelings about Golden Age. Okay, okay. because okay, so there's I, in in NCT songs. I feel like there are some components at this point that you kind of come to expect, right? And it just kind of applies to SM songs in general, where you will have a, a vocalist who sounds kind of like Do Young, and often is Do Young singing a pre-chorus that gets you perfectly in the mood for what you, the chorus is going and then if the if the song is right and it hits in the right places you get those classic sm boy group harmonies and an incredible chorus melody and stuff and golden age has exactly that and you're like yo this is like one of the, this is an sm song that like i'm here i'm here for this and then uh, then the chorus and you, it's like they're hitting, and you're like they're, they're taking up this melody, and you're like, yes, boys, give me everything. And then it just kind of tails off, trails off, and then turns into this weird, like, just like staccato style verse, which obviously, like, the rappers are very capable of doing multiple styles and stuff like that, but it just completely takes you out of where you were in the song. And it's so fucking annoying. Like, <laughs> I was much. like... Change oh, it, like, like too much it was just it's so it was so frustrating because it, it reminded me like you know how good the chorus of um favorite is hmm. and like well, one to seven you know a, that that but, might be the most banger release they like have. but you know that what i mean but like, like that's that's yeah. such, I'm, I'm trying to i'm trying to contextualize it for yeah. you <laughs> like that's such a great chorus yeah and then imagine you just take we have that chorus and then you stop it halfway through and change it to something else hmm. and no you, i know you what just, you mean it's like getting blue ball it's it's <laughs> and it's not because the song just changes up it's like they just took it in a really bad direction yeah um no i, I, just, I it's very very upsetting like, I, I understand your your gripe with it but on the album as a whole there were some really good songs especially pardo pardo is like a classic ntt r b style yeah what was Groove, the other like, one they did a video for the I I the one I actually they did they did videos for like every song okay but there was like the one I didn't like was the jeans one I think oh whatever. baggy jeans yeah no that was ass yeah no yeah, baggy, baggy jeans not... was just kind of like baggy 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 yeah baggy, yeah it's baggy. just one of those yeah, things yeah. That, like, you know everyone no, that probably not loves hit. it or whatever but I was just like, but yeah, yeah. No, 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 that that did not hit me either. But, but um, there are always good yeah. songs. I feel like on and, and I think that's that's what annoys me about, about them because there's there's so much there that then they just don't always give you, and it's like I guess it kind of makes it very rewarding when it does hit. But like I'm always like I'm thinking back to like songs like like early songs like Limitless hmm. or whatever, and I'm like, oh could be like this just being a little too nostalgic <laughs> yeah my olden citizen brain apparently <laughs> um yes anyway so yeah right. 
Bam bam bam. I thought uh, this was a, a disco banger, song. Like the the synth pop style I thought was like a really good release from her. I enjoyed it a lot yeah. better than what I'd heard before from from her solo stuff. Yeah, I obviously like the disco melody and and, and instrumentation. I really like, but I her voice doesn't do it for me. It, it doesn't carry the song mm, well enough. Doesn't carry it, that to, style for you to to the, to the point that it, I'm like. I may it's like I'm listening because I'm enjoying the sound of the music and like she could not be there. <laughs> and I'm then I or, or, or I'm sat there thinking like I don't feel this way, Yurid. I thought you were wonderful. I'm not this strong, okay. Maybe I'm I'm coming off harsh. I didn't I I like the song, but I, I'm like, ah, uh, you know, if I, I could have a different vocalist singing this and it would improve it. V- video and song I thought were both really enjoyable. The video had like kind of the arcadey thing starting in the beginning. Um, Naturally. Her running around with some handsome dude the whole time. <laughs> no, I but, but the, the song slapped in my opinion. Like uh, I thought her voice did good in the style. Okay, I think maybe it just didn't even. It just wasn't right. Sat in the mix right for me or something. I don't know. It just kind of felt like a little bit too light, I guess. It was and I know simple songs kind of are usually light. light. Song. I mean, I, would say I don't know. I don't know. There's, there's something about it that just didn't. Yeah, it felt like that. It, it left me with it left me with an itch that wasn't scratched. I guess is the best okay. way to. We call that bad taste. That's right. But <laughs> but an eighty song that certainly did smack and hit in the right places for me was the one but the the Heike released Soul What a Beautiful City when and uh, last Friday I had the I sat in front of Huisa and told her that it was a fucking banger and she was very appreciative. You told Rena too, right? And I didn't meet Rena. Just I just met Huisa. So. Um, and I also saw them perform it live, which was nice as well. Um, yeah, I thought it was great. Yeah, great. Oh, you met because you met uh, uh, L's. Met L's up. L's up. Yeah. Put your L's up. Yeah. Mm. Um, <laughs> I'm still not used to that name. I'll, I'll find a way to get used to. It. Yeah. By that time, they'll have finished. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I thought a really good song. Um, very, very much. I thought Soul it. was great. Yeah, Soul, right? It was the, yeah. Another one it's that like had kind of with the synth, synth just in the right kind of points. It, if you listen to the whole the whole EP, like, or single album, I think it is, it has an intro at the start. Okay, show off the arms. That's no, I just I keep stretching this morning. <laughs> like, I'm like, you just say, hey, ladies, check out the guns. <laughs> yeah, <it's> uh, uh, <laughs> But it, it has like a like a, a brief intro, which is which leads perfectly into the into the soul song, which is like nice. has some to, of the I'll same. Have to check that out. I thought I listened to the album, but I'll have to. It's, it has like it, it's to the point that it sounds like the intro to like an eighties cop show. Oh, it's perfect. really it's it's really good. Yeah. It's a great release from there. I'm, yeah. I'm hoping they get that big boost from all the Queen of Puzzle stuff. Yeah, but um, uh, I mean they, they sold like seventy k. You're in you're in a very difficult spot with Rina, I know. Yeah. Been annihilating me. I don't know like what that's the only takeaway I have from Queendom Puzzle. <laughs> that Rina has annihilated, <laughs> that Rina has annihilated me. That's about it. That's my uh, takeaway. Um I oh, yeah, have a sad uh we had a, a goodbye song from BDC who sadly disbanded. Which is a shame because they had some they had some absolute bangers in there. I mean, was it called like Moonwalk Moonwalking? I was like, oh tune. Um but sadly yeah they, they called it quit. I'm trying to think that's right, that's something else that I was thinking of. Um overall I would say September has already been better than August in my opinion <laughs> of releases maybe just uh, of what's happened, but hold the phone. Okay. Right. Just relax. Just relax. Relax. Relax a little bit, okay? We've got a couple right at the end here that we absolutely need to talk about. One thing you're forgetting is uh, right here. This is Signature Us in the Summer, which was released. You're right. Smooth sailing. Smooth sailing. Dip, 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 smooth sailing. You're so right. And Why did I think that was like the beginning of September? Damn it. It was right. It was right. It was like the 29th of August. So I can okay. But um, listen, I'm biased. <laughs> no, it's the best release of the whole month. I think it's a really, really solid release. No, it's I the think, best release um, of the whole month. Just say I think com- I think cover to cover, very good. Say what it is. It's the, the best songs. release of the whole month. I'm not going to say that because I'm not <laughs> insane. But um, 
yeah, like I think it's probably their it's their strongest collection of songs. I think, um, yeah. and I think it's also probably the most accessible. And I thought Smooth Sailing was a great song. Yeah, but we both like the little little me the the song at the end the, the best, right? That yes. was uh, but our favorite. Smooth Sailing made so much sense as the title. Like, yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, really, yeah, really, really solid. And um, yeah, sorry, sorry, so sorry, and um, mess with my mind also just very very good songs so mm. well done Siggies. um it's good to well see that they came Siggies. out with uh without bell and did all that um i've been like i'm not seeing them again until the 19th um so i have to i have to i'm not going to be a signature withdrawal after having seen them after so much the, like, so over the last couple weird. of weeks <laughs> yeah um it's sometimes like seeing them like conse- on like consecutive days and stuff um the last time I saw I saw them, me and Celine fully like dap. We like dap were like yo like chest pop. and the staff were like laughing. They were like, "Well, I've not seen that. I've not seen that before." One day I but will anyway. have that interaction and not the awkward one I did with Semi. I swear. I mean, look, Semi is an awkward person. This way, um, but yeah, and then also, and you're gonna hate yourself even more for this. The day after that. Kim Sejong released, but actually, okay, I'll, I'll I'll give you the credit for this. This was the she released the pre-release, and the full album came out at the start of September. So we can save Sejong until mm-hmm. we do the September round. We can Sejong September. Yeah, yeah. Not but I saw I'm the just saving my own skin, but because uh, <laughs> I, I I saw I saw the name and I was like, mm. um, we did get uh the little release from One We, which was nice, seeing that they were still doing stuff even though we were just three of them. Uh, and we had a couple of songs from BB, um, kind of going back to her old R and B. She did a very roots. love, the like very song. sweet, like, yeah, sweet I was song, the like whole the, the time video, for the man like... to be murdered somehow at some point in the video. <laughs> yeah, because her last album set like a tone that we're like, mm. oh, like I get your point here, but I and you know we're kind of expecting something along that, and she ended up. Just, it was like that really nice, like old couple remembering their like youth and stuff. It was very, very wholesome. Yes. Um, and then she also did the Hongdae song, which was like again just like classic. It's called, but it's literally called like Hongdae R and B or something. Um, just like if it's just very cla- a couple of classic sounding BB songs, like playing to her strengths and her voice and stuff, and yeah, just really good. You know, can't um, yeah, it's a good return. Can't to complain, old. but I, yeah, I, I do agree. I remember at the start of um, at the start of September, I, I looked at my like best of the quarter songs uh, playlist. So I, I tried to make like around twenty songs for the best of the quarter, and it was only at eleven from July through August. And I was thinking like, we might struggle to meet uh, to make twenty this uh, this quarter. Yeah. But actually, actually, September has had a good few, a good few bangers in it that has uh, helped. Yeah, um, September had some really big comebacks that were like, oh, and then there's more big ones to come because Send Me and everything like that as well. Yeah. Uh, I obviously am going to save any I've discussion for next time. But... Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not a thing yet. Um, there's, a couple, so there's, a, there's a couple... <laughs> Oh, yeah. There's a couple of songs that did drop in um, in August that I did add to the to the list that I need. I feel like I should mention um, those are "Dystopia" by Hey Men, which is a hilarious. I think I played that on a stream. It was just a, like it was one of those songs. You you start playing it, you hear synth, and you're like, okay. Yeah, like point zero um, seconds in. Just yeah, yeah. but it, it was from the a full album, their first full length album called Shelter. Um, and the majority of the songs on there are not uh, of that vibe. It was kind of like, uh, oh, what, what, where the hell is this? But um, where did it come from? But it was a fucking banger. So there you go. Um, I also added Hong Yeon, of course, uh, on the end, because that shit just smacked and yeah. I love her. So, you know. Um, I added Little Me by Signature, as we mentioned. Um, I added a song called Bloom by Hour, which I... Uh, remember you played on a stream and you were like if this has reverbed ooze at the end I'm oh gonna... that okay and I then exactly. <laughs> and then, and then... It and hit like exactly... 0.2 seconds after i said that right like yeah. reverbed like, ooze and all in your outro it sounds great okay like it works it, it works i agree me. it is effective it's just hilarious when you can know it's i'm very happen, like 
I am, yeah. Uh, there's also called Adulting by Isla or Ayla. I don't know how to say adulting. it. Um, <laughs> adulting, yeah. It's from an album, an album called Comely, which I didn't um, show you. So there's that. Uh, I'll have to show you that at some point. I remember that was like a, another synth pop bang. It was pretty good. A song called Lone by an artist called Blue LK or Blue. It's all one word, so I don't know. But I'm just I'm saying blue LK because it doesn't make any sense. But the album's called In Your Pain, and it's um, in your pain. it's like I guess the way to it's describe like a it would be song title like In Your Pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very dark sounding. It's it's kind of like it's like mournful or a melon. It's like melancholic drum and bass, <laughs> <laughs> if that makes sense. It's no, got like I, a drum. I, I like, can kind of understand what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Like it's got like a drum and bass drum pattern with like minor chord progressions over the top of it, mm. you know. And then it's like gives you some. So it's like you're vibing, but you're sad. You're crying in the club, but oh, <laughs> kind of. You know. Almost like when there's like those um, early '90s bass lines that were always depressing or whatever. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, like for, the, for people who are like who grew up in terrible cities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, there was an album called uh, Back on My BS <laughs> Back on my okay. by uh, an artist called Hardy and Fa- uh, in collab with Favor, um, which I also really fucking enjoyed. And they had a song called uh, WDYW, which I presume means What Do You Want? <laughs> mm, I would hope so. But I'm, not, like, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> which, which do you whine? Mm, it's possible. Um, but yeah, that was a fucking tune. Uh, I did add Angela. Why do you drink? As well, <laughs> or no, because it's um, why do you or why wine? Do you what do you wine? Oh, yeah, do you wine? <laughs> so, do you wine? <laughs> yes, I wine. Um, I added part of NCT to you because that was nice. Uh, oh yeah, and add a doy that was it. A A D O Y. I don't know if that's. How I should say it or not, I've been saying Adoy. Um, they're like a, a synth pop indie band, so they're just like, of course. it's like someone sat and was like, What would this guy want to listen to all the time? And um, the answer is, uh, is that synth pop apparently, that is um, the perfect description of like... there are actually, I think I actually had two songs of theirs on uh, the, the album is called Pleasures. Uh, I think I had two of the songs, I think I had Touch and um jet on there at first on my list and i removed one and left just jet because i don't want to have two from the same artist but yeah great stuff very much so for many me. things from the same artist in my list. i mean for, for my end of year list i may have the same artist but like for uh, i don't want to just drop two things from the same album in the best of the quarter of this album. but anyway yeah so that's um those are my kind of more obscure that songs august. that i liked that's august i yeah. We always say who won August. Uh, signature. I'm giving it to Signature. Let's go. I think Signature won August. Let's go. I think Smooth Sailing, if I think about everything that was released. I mean, Everglow Slave was definitely my style, but I'm going to give it to Signature. Hell yeah. I'm not going to second second guess that. We're going to we'll go signature. with Siggies. Let's go. Let's go. I forgive you, Chasel. I forgive you, <laughs> Chloe. <laughs> For Actually, what? I don't need to forgive Chasel for anything, but oh, I forgive for Chloe. Chance. I forgive Chloe for for the Liverpool jersey. I'm never forgiving Chloe for that. I'm not, I'm not lie. Chasel so wore, I... wore a Chelsea jersey or something, right? Yeah, G one and Chasel are both. I could Chelsea forgive that jersey. Barcelona. And... Barcelona knocked you guys out and went and won a Champions League final. So. Just... Well, we knocked Barcelona out and won a Champions League final. So Whatever. It's fine. So fine. It's, it's even. Fine. There you go. It's, yeah. It's, exactly. It's one and one. Um. <laughs> There's, do you want to even have like she had got like a little bear with a Chelsea scar? It's very good, good That's stuff. Adorable, yes. But um, I'll, I'll, I'll mention it. I'll mention this adorable. to them. And uh, Chloe, if you end up watching this, uh, I don't. I don't forgive you. <laughs> I'll always forgive you, Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that has been the August roundup and some news in this episode. Yeah. I am Honan. I'm Oliver. Goodbye. <laughs>